All right, we'll get started. Hello, and welcome to the Let's Talk About Autism in Monglish podcast. I am so excited for today's recording. I I told my guests before we started, I said, I'm a little nervous. I felt this way too last time um, with Dr. Alyssa. And so today I'm feeling mm-hmm. the same way because I feel like, you know, I show up to these recordings and I'm like, oh, I have all the questions and I have some of the answers. But today I'm like, I am a student today. I'm just here to learn <laughs> from the amazing Dr. B. Shong Wang. Thank you so much, Dr. B, for being on my podcast today. Yeah, thank you, Tia. It's actually, it's my pleasure. I've been following your work. Um, and just listening to the episodes and it's so meaningful. So I'm, I'm just glad to be here. Yeah. So you reached out to me earlier this year and I was so surprised because, you know, honestly, I never know if anybody listens. <laughs> like I look at the stats and I'm like, oh, there's a few per episode, you know, and I was really excited when I got to my like thousandth like download. I was like, woo. Uh-huh. But um, I was so, I was geeking out and fangirling when you <laughs> messaged me and so you listened to them and then you said, and I have notes. And I was like, yes, you have notes. I want to hear all about it. <laughs> and yeah. so I've definitely been following you because the I, I do this quite a lot in the work that I do right and it's so um yeah I, I just um am so passionate about um just the presentation and how people understand autism um so this is yeah just right up my alley so I, I really appreciate you bringing this to the whole community yes well thank you so much to your colleague who brought my podcast to put on your radar um yes. I am you know the first few seasons just been trying to get a feel for the lay of the land see where the Hmong community is comfortable with and like I mm-hmm. shared before like my first episode was talking about autism k-drama because you know we, we all watch k-dramas yes. right and then these yes. last few years they're diving into that topic and then um having families and friends and uh, professionals in the field um Hmong mm-hmm professionals in the field reaching out and say, hey, I'm following your work. Yeah, Kahina, I'm following your work and I have more to add. And so for me, I'm just like, you know, I'm constantly like waiting for someone to say, I have something to contribute to this. And I want to make sure mm-hmm. that, you know, I, like I never show up, you know, thinking or projecting the idea that I have all the answers or I know it all. Mm-hmm. But today, you guys, we really are talking to a diagnosed non-statistician who diagnose those individuals with autism. And so um, I'm a BCBA. I don't diagnose, right? That's what we talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, I do the clinical aspect, but Dr. B, you see individuals um, and mom individuals where you're located. Mm -hmm. And so you bring so much more of that hands-on um aspect that I don't see and so I'm so interested Mm -hmm. to learn more about that but but before we get there though can you please tell me how you got Mm -hmm. into this field um what brought you to um what you're doing now yeah great question um I was actually um a social worker before I became a psychologist um Mm -hmm. I just am just I've always been fascinated with um humans right? Human behaviors, um, human experiences. So that's really what got me into the mental health field. Um, And I went back to, um, for my um, psychology, my clinical psychology um, degree, because I, of that curiosity, just wanting to understand people and really um, understanding assessments um, and how do we use assessment to understand people. Um, However, um, I've always told people, when I came out though, because my comfort is in therapy, um, in the clinical mm-hmm. direct work with, with clients through therapy, um, I never actually thought I would do um, assessments full time. Um, and it's a bit intimidating, honestly, you know, the, the work that goes into it. Um, and so I kind of shied away from that, um, even though I got really good training, but I just didn't, that wasn't my comfort area. And I am now realizing that um, it wasn't uh, my comfort area because the training is really geared towards a certain type of population, right? And if I want to work mm-hmm. with more people, I'm not trained necessarily to work with more people. Um, so, it, you know, it's a little bit different when it comes to therapy, because, you know, we have things that we can rely on, just like connections, for example. But when it came to assessment, um, it, it becomes more analytical, it becomes um, more objective. And, you know, we just weren't taught in that kind of way. So, Um, It took me a while, but um, I uh, then just got put in a situation where I was the only psychologist who could be in the position to provide um, psychological testing. And I was like, you know what? 
someone's got to do the work. So yes. um, there I was um, just throwing myself in and, um, you know, just having, again, just good training behind me um, and good support, you know, system as I continue to do this work. And it just became more and more comfortable. And here I am um, just doing this full time. Yes. Well, thank you for being bringing your experience and all the under, cultural understanding, right? I think for me mm-hmm. as a clinician, um, when I first started off as a early in the field or even a few years ago as a baby yes. BCBA, you know, you just like mm-hmm. show up to do the job and then you think about yes. your the cultural component and how lacking yes. you see that in your actual work on the day-to-day basis. Yeah. And you really do start searching deep down and go, how can I be the one to change that, right? Um, yeah. And if not for the families that I have already, you know, been serving for future families and how do I shift the conversation? And just as mm-hmm. a small example, it's just how, you know, we see those numbers, the CDC number, right? The one in 36. Yes. But if you look at yes. the research, that one in 36 is based on a very small study, right? And yeah. we don't know what fraction of that is long, long kiddos, right? Yeah. Even mm-hmm. how much of that fraction is, um, you know, a, a black child or a Hispanic mm-hmm. child. And so we're just going off of these numbers. And we know that historically, you know, a lot of studies um, to include, uh, you know, mom individuals, right? So the, mm-hmm. I mean, just talking about the, you know, the equity part there, right? Like it's just yeah. it's not happening. So to see a psychologist who's invested in, you know, um, looking into the cultural components of this, it, it's, it's such a move towards the future. So I thank you mm-hmm. for that. Um, yeah, of course. Someone asked me recently about, you know, why why are the numbers in uh, increasing in big and population, you know, and I was breaking mm-hmm. it down for her, yeah, like, you know, sure, it, the numbers are, if you look at the studies, one in the 16, but what do we mm-hmm. know from Hmong individuals? So, you know, I'm trying mm-hmm. to, like, put numbers together and make it make mm-hmm. sense, but we don't have any true actual numbers, yeah. and I'd love to see a study on that moving forward, but mm-hmm. I think first part and the, the main reason why I started my podcast was just can we normalize these conversations and talk about autism mm-hmm. awareness right so that's a that's a conversation I hope that maybe five years yes. down the road 10 years down the road we can have some actual data to support any of yeah. the theories and hypotheses that we bring up today so I know mm-hmm. um I want to share with everyone Dr. B was like hey, I listened to your podcast and here are some areas that I really want to dive in deeper. And I was like, yes, absolutely. So she sent me a list and we're really just going to go and tackle all of them one by one. And the first area Mm -hmm. that you brought up was um, talking about a better understanding and the differentiation between a cognitive um, and an intellectual disability versus um, autism spectrum, right? Because Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of times in uh, the Hmong community, you know, the Chipotle autism, like, uh, oh, you know, it can't be autism because they're so smart. If they're jungling, quote unquote, normal, Mm -hmm. that's wrong with them, right? Quote unquote. Um, and then, you know, we also look at like autism is a variability in skills development. And you, I use mm-hmm. the example, of, we talk about like levels one, two, and three, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's hard for big and Hmong parents to understand how autism can look like the king, the but then you, if you really look at the social um, skills and the communication yes. skills, you know, maybe it's just a little uh, different, right? Um, yes. Versus the level three, which could be mm-hmm. as far as, yes. you know, where, um, you know, a diaper, mm-hmm. right? It's a major. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's what I So like just mm-hmm. that, you know, variability in skills development is uh, hard to explain. And then we also talk about how mm-hmm. autism is a brain difference. You know, and so um, we just talk about Lalu neurodivergent. It literally just means a difference in the brain, you know. And so, uh, can you please um, tell me, and and, you know, if you're comfortable, and mom for our Mm -hmm. mom listeners, about you know, how do we explain that? Mm -hmm. Do they mom parents or mom individuals Mm -hmm. that uh, talk about get the mom autism and live with the autism? How do you break that down for them? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll start with. Uh, maybe we'll get to that piece in a little bit here. But, you know, when I was talking about um, um, the difference between 
a cognitive uh, intellectual uh, ability na kunta mm-hmm. mayo you lu um a uh, pingsu lo you so game j na okay and for autism na ma na um I guess we have to be in English. I talk at the autism. You have to do the other one. So, okay. So, autism is a characteristic of the symptom of autism. It's a symptom of autism. It's a symptom of autism. It's a symptom of autism. First and foremost, it's a symptom of autism. 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 Um, ke um, ta du lo lu tu na yao kun tao nu nu zhong li jia na. Okay, so that is autism. Okay, mm-hmm. it has nothing to do at that point. So ho ho a game chain na. Okay, right. Um, so so that's the biggest difference between kun tao. So for example, um, so all all kun tao man ying, um. You know, I think people will look at them. They they'll be like, oh, but then they're intertwined. Ga ying um. Kind of intertwined. Tell that she might yeah be high talk yeah autism. So now, new be join yeah so hard. There's a shit to do. Then that new um high level yeah new to tau new level to yeah new to to tau new level yeah new for new or or that she new to tau new tier um uh new she new uh they show me that they she new now yeah they show new she they yeah be a uh to new to so now can do a new to tau new now um that. So, Yaminyo, a Chichota Tolu, to Jungoli, the Shai, a son, the little King Su, the fortune tone, the Lusai Mona. Okay, so Yaminyo, the Down, the um, Tilly Yard, your a bone dog or autism, no, okay. Hawking Jade, Hawking the Mopping Soon, and the Mapping Malin Chua, Down Zina, Yabi Malin Moko, a that specifier that you're talking about is the Pomoi Ko, a um, cognitive peace law. Um, so on the top in the top of the top of the top of the top yeah that's that's a great explanation because I think there is that confusion between um and, and let me just go back to the a common conversation we hear too right yeah um in the Hmong language because we are so limited mm-hmm. yes and plus because we want to look for autism okay yes uh they Sometimes you know what they default to all the door, right? Yeah, and, and so mm-hmm. that comes into this conversation in that cognitively, you know, intellectually, yes. no, yes. right? Like the, mm-hmm. when, when autism does not determine or autism does not equal door, right? Yes. Um, there are different uh-huh. components at play here. So can you elaborate yeah. on how we can further, um, you know, uh-huh. have that conversation? Yeah, so to a mong hai lolo to na na yo ha dia te so tu tu mi yo na ta ni chi king lo ni chin shei zao na. Ha tu na ma it's actually more um representative yo mo hai lo na to ho cognitive disability la na, okay? Right. Uh to ho cognitive disability na ma ya yo lu um ping su na shi shei yu yu zao che king bo li ya na, okay? So yo hay so bé chấm bé hầm mong a lo lu chỗ xin ai vậy um thầu lời chỉ lo lu nó tới to describe um ý thứ tín hình nè um phong tục có cognitive disability đó có cần tới mà nhưng chỗ yếu lút lút tiền tiền nè hạt tiền sẽ sẽ yếu kinh bảo lịch chả ok um autism nè mà um nhưng mà chỗ mình nhỏ a um chân chế hùng nãy giờ là lút lút um là cái cái cỡ nè mà là cái kinh đó đó chỉ mà so you have the little phong to call a little um special to more like how a lot of how a um can she talk so long to look to now yeah how do you know how you are done now so um you know you know coming on the you know she do a yeah little high law yeah no no jail that she ma no her um that's the variability so um, I guess new hope ka to ko e new chi cho ta ta lo le tu na okay um that she ma because ko nia um ko autism the ko ko e intellectual disability na na ni ying a shi zuo de zhong na yao ge um ye mo de tu min yo e la lu lu ying um chi king zao la la ying de zhong ge ge na yao tie chi ta lin de la la ying mo de ming e um ta ta lo le tu tie le ge nu te mo ko e um, autism, total cognitive impairment here, no, okay. So there is definitely no more um your a presentation, a 
so that that is one of the biggest differentiation. There's variability now, y'all. There's definitely variability to mm-hmm. presentation. Um so for example, um I'll give uh, a, a, an example here of what's possible. Uh, but it's a good example. Uh, like in her mid twenties, I think of uh, in she's smart. She's very mm-hmm. smart. The mm-hmm. um, average IQ is like one, um, like ninety to one nine. Okay, that's pretty average, right? Right around that equal, okay. She's like in one thirties. That's like wow. brilliant. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um and yet um even um autism it's one area and then the other bigger area is the ka a behatia uh, restrictive, repetitive patterns of behaviors, right? Yes. Um, so, Asian goli, you ora chilo on in you, 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 uh, mo chi, you know, you know, what chi tauli, you shia sana yo, lock yan and uh, chi jongli, you shia sana, chi jongli, you watch it tauke lilana, okay? Tia chi talin tana, um, uh, bondo shing and the tia, your dining a, um, um, la ora chilo, la ora, um, fish or, um, um her environment and yeah just the con a digital low um like the sensory so they yeah a la bolt to the key now yeah um they get very distracted by that especially your yeah, sensory um stimulation and the new um is very distracting la only new to learn okay um they get very distracted by that there's a lot of like perseveration where um the what are you know the dina yo the day ke ju ko le mu chi tao le la ta ka ta ta ka le lo kon da ta mo le sna yo ya ri da ka se dai ke ta ta ka repeat over over na um the mo ko jong le da na yo so um um the one sai no na ma ne like i said ne hai zhong ne hu shen ma ne jin che ge ho da shi ma simple things like no mo na yo ne chi bao ha de ne lu la chai li ja le yo um that's because you know again big yummy yum autism na um certain things low low ka um wiring na if you will the ka wiring ya hello to new chi zhong ya li um the average person na yo ye um hai zuo ya li na mo so long ne du chi bao ha de na mo to tu na ya de ni ni ya zhuo ai hao lo hai de ne dia he du zuo jian na mo le na jia ge chi dou na mo she could go a whole day without eating because new chi mo chai na yo ne chi bao chai Oh, you're not just talking about checking it, check blood hole, right? Um, same thing with sleep. So, okay, but the other goal is to keep our head in game, right? So, it's things like this where it's very debilitating. Okay, or do you need to see your shit that are connected more? You do your it to be in a um low, right? You need to blow your blood, right? Um, that's she ma um. Then you need to change the mood and the new your college this she na okay. That's she ma. So they yah me me no so or jah no ho or jah to down no to king na yah. So it's very confusing. So parents na ha they or jah no ho mo jah me yah shouldn't know. Yeah. So Dr. B, you bring up a very good point that this year alone, not so many stories of jah ning lao ming chi right jah it that high school yes. and like adults seeking an AAC diagnosis. It's harder to mm-hmm. get because you're having to. Prove so much to get someone yes. to see you. First of all, but yeah. why do you think that is? Why do you think um, mm-hmm. maybe they were not? They were somehow looked over or passed over in yes. grade school, and now as adults, they're presenting with these different characteristics that are, like you said, debilitating. Like, well, how did yes. um, how did the school system or how did us as clinicians miss yeah. these kiddos? Yeah, because um, I, I would say that most times now, y'all, y'all, a me, y'all, a get messed now. Um, are the high functioning. So mm-hmm. high functioning means that low, going back to her cognitive like intellectual ability now, okay? Low yes. flu ma lun chai zao na yao, low yao jia min yong jun chai na, um, low ku zhen hai lu, low tao tao jia um, de ya yi de nai ku um, teach lu na, um, tia low ku tao tao uh, hai zao, 
uh, and when I say total, I don't mean on a deep level because the mean your amo autism are they're very black and white, right? The shima hai to facts sooner. Lo um go kia lo lo ko tao yan tan tao yo ye lo ko tao na ye lo wo lo wo tao zhong na lo ko lo lo xing tao tin de lo lo xing tao zhong na okay. As long as the environment is conducive to to them, okay. So the mean your na na ye lo ko um jin jin na yo ye tia chi ta lin tao na um. I would have to say too that Ningo Hyung Tolo Nayo, um, the field of um, autism assessment has changed quite a bit yes. too. Okay, we know a lot more about autism um, at this time than we did back then. So you know, it put a lot the call the way that they assess you know, Okay, so that is one thing. The shima jo a high functioning autism na um jamin yo na na jin yin nyo sha na they 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 don't typically get diagnosed until later in life. Um, Chitalin Dalsina. Um, um, I think part of it is that um, they do minyona nu um lo lo ko ko nyo ko autism nanda na yah nu chi severe enough, if you will. Like lo yah jamin yah where lo yu mo yu lo yu itz mo da shi ma they show the environment or ko demand of ko situation nanda na nu chi tao. What they mean, lots out of the minyona, until they let the lot lot learn. Yeah, until let the adult, and then um, especially uh, as an adult, uh, you lay um, they show um, you know, they a you in the age, uh, in the age girl, and yeah, they are just telling that you more pung you, um, you just more in the age, lot protect you, lot of how you your adult, you lay more, you know, you're on your own, um, and. It's those environments that might be demanding, and then um, you chi mo jiao a people that usually nyong them that protect you a lot to ba you na yao, and then because of that, then it makes those symptoms more problematic and more challenging to be for them to be independent, and so that's why I think um, some people come back at a later time um, to get a diagnosis. It's not that they never had it because autism na ma ni yao a pa a neurodevelopmental disorder, meaning that. อ่าคนตัดสายตาหัดเตียนนี่ยิ่งเยอะเอฟพอเอจัดสารแต่ยูรู้ลึกซีลิทอยูยูรอเลยนะโอเคช่วยเยอะหัดเตียนที่ชอ
one answer yet okay mm-hmm. because we don't mm-hmm. have the data to support that so no clinician mm-hmm. no physician out there is going to tell you that you know uh you know because similar to like with down syndrome you know science has mm-hmm. found that there is a chromosome that you know mm-hmm. that leads yes. to that diagnosis but for autism but there is so much um research out there to support the possibility of it so could you expand on that mm-hmm. when people ask like the yeah. eight you know or they'll say oh you know um because we know autism appears more in boys than girls yes. and so when uh-huh. you hear you don't know that hey, we have an uncle that is you know mm-hmm. we think that he is yes. on the spectrum and then you know big y'all big you mean you are more up into cousins yeah so they're kind yeah. of like you know you know making mm-hmm. those links but as yeah. a clinician you know, you know, you know yes or no to yes. As honestly, the science mm-hmm. has not put out this message that this mm-hmm. is definitive. This is the reason. This mm-hmm. is the answer. So, what are your thoughts on that? How do you never get this conversation? Yeah, at least who asks. Um. So I don't have the actual uh, literature to support this, but um, there is research out there actually. The uh, um, autism. Uh, there is a hereditary link. like mm-hmm. Yeah, call a link now, but when it comes to hereditaries now, how um how you get a um loss now, yeah, um if there is autism, that there is a higher likely chance that other individuals um will also have autism too. Okay, she said that they have more law like you, you try more law, but just that call probability now, yeah, they share door. Okay. Um, and we talk about, you know, now moving on to the next topic and, you know, that yeah. um, the way that Beijing about autism or the yeah. disability and then talk yes. about, you know, um, developmental because we I think we understand physical disability, right? Like yes. that is evident. Uh-huh. We, have, we yes. all understand that. But developmental intellectual uh-huh. disability, that is still yes. a work in progress. Um, and then, you know, yeah. sometimes you know, you know, that it in itself is a barrier to seeking yeah. and receiving services and treatment. So, I mean, I see yes. that all the time with job, you know, aging me, right? So I work with yes. kids under seven, and that is such a crucial yeah. and critical time and such an important time when we're talking about early intervention. And that is mm-hmm. when a lot of parents miss that boat because they don't know, yes. right? They don't know that yeah. this is an important time to call. I think there's yeah. this overgeneralization that, oh, no, but mm-hmm. he'll catch up. You know, or any yes. dog, older siblings, you know, mm-hmm. they'll be okay, right? Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it becomes this barrier to seeking and receiving those services. But like, how mm-hmm. can you, how do we share this message with our Hmong community mm-hmm. about, you know, spreading yeah. that awareness and understanding yes. on a different level to where the first thing we do is seeking, you know, yeah. support and, and not being afraid of autism, you know, not of, of the yeah. word, of the diagnosis. And knowing that there's support, and I think for the longest yeah. time, you know, if I might say so, you feel like, you know, this is my podcast, so I'm going to say this. Uh-huh. I think for the longest yeah. time, autism seemed like a white person's diagnosis, right? Yeah. Oh, mom, mm-hmm. We're not impacted by it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, if you hear that much. Mm-hmm. And now that, you know, hopefully we're kind of generating more, you know, noise. Yes. Um, rallying, you know, just trying to have these conversations, Mm -hmm. we realize, and someone said the other day, you know, like, you don't even have to think very far, your own immediate family, you more opulent, right? I mean, you're more autism. So now it's kind of like staring us in the face and it would be such a disservice for all of us, right? All of us clinicians to not address it, to not Mm -hmm. say to the Hmong community, like, you know, it it is a diagnosis that is, is in our community. And you know yeah. what? There's no reason to be afraid of it. In fact, yes. there is support, there's resources, and your child can thrive. Yeah. But the caveat is you have to start early, right? You have to know yeah. the science. Mm-hmm. And when you don't, that is the greatest barrier is when you don't know the science. So mm-hmm. please enlighten yeah. me and our home community on what yeah. we can do as one, as professionals, and two, as parents yeah. to work around this barrier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, such a great question. There's so much there. Okay, so I'll I'll start and then yeah. we'll see where things go. Okay. Um, so I would just want to give a call analogy now, y'all. Um, mm-hmm. And this actually comes from my um, supervisor, Nia Demika, but I, I, I love this analogy. Um, 
the idea that okay, ilu chena yao, ni mo um like you know fai fa, ni mo you know just um uh, like light switch, ni mo you know pa fai fa and all that right. So ni mo tan tao yao you you lu chen kan li functional right. You lo tao chen you tan ding lu ding tan tan. You mo um actually you shi um you know microwave plug it in um don't lu pa fai fa ni kan li um work right um and all of that. So lu chen ni yong dou zhi zhong lai yao. Ya min yao a um. More intellectual disability, na where nulu um nu zake ping nulu ping su na yao la nu zake ge nu da nu um de zhou ying uh ping la de zhou qi mo zhou na yao yao jian da na ge lu che na is missing those wires, those missing those connections. Qi mo zhou lu che is not complete. Okay, that's intellectual disability. The autism na most times. Luce ying complete nut, okay? Ying call ta yi zhi zhong. So you have that your saw fai fa na is all miswired. So ka la zhe zhe ka te lu lu ding na yo, but yet the, I don't know, the microwave starts. Yeah. Right? So the wiring is all kind of messed up, okay? Um, Like wired differently or just wired, um, just, um, yeah, not not connected to the right place. So that's why um, high saw treatment na um, and assessment. Um, it's very important. You have to follow your signs, nandala na. You have to like get that treatment right away because autism, unlike um, intellectual disability, autism na man you you more chance, especially the sooner you get to it, the sooner um, you have to rewire some of the uh, connections and then uh, it goes yes. you chain light so wire it connect to the microwave now the color to the light and so on okay so that uh so autism is a diagnosis where some of that rewiring can re- that can happen you need more early treatment i love that analogy so much <laughs> that mm-hmm. is like the I'm, I'm a very mm-hmm. yeah i'm a very visual person and for me that makes so much sense yeah thank you so much yeah. dr b for that analogy yeah um and so you know we we're talking a little bit about how you know asd what it is and what it is not yes. so you just really yes. dove into that but tell me about you know mm-hmm. um, you said seen in social media so what are some things that you see out yeah. there that people are projecting you know when they talk about asd that you want to kind yeah. of debunk or clarify yeah um so yes that um you know i'm not like super social media right that she i get a lot of people who come in to see me and say they'll say things like oh i saw this on social media and i think that's me you know Mm -hmm. so i assume that there is a lot out there from what I, I've been hearing. Okay. So what you follow, I'm not on TikTok. I'm not, I'm on Facebook, but I'm kind of limited. Um, I'm not into like these other social media. So would you follow to check now? Okay. But just from what your clients, they don't cheat Guna for assessment, they'll come in and they'll say, Oh, and is that me? So this is obviously a higher functioning. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so um, some of the things that keeps coming up, um, and this ties directly, more trauma, a lot of trauma. Um, so people with significant trauma, it can look like autism. Okay, there's a lot of other things like even depression can make somebody look like um, autism. Okay, the reason is because, um, yeah, you more okay, for example, if trauma, okay, if you have significant trauma, how you're learning now, mm-hmm. um, can I pause you, you for a second? Natu- oh, yeah, uh huh, yes, can you, uh, in Hmong, uh, Lalu trauma, uh-huh. what is the best way to? Oh, yeah. What what word would you use for trauma? Yeah, for big, we get listeners. Ag learn how trauma. Yes. She break that down into even more simplified moments. Yes, yes, trauma. Yeah, so trauma. Na man de yao de ya e chu shi hao yu lu ning na e wo zhou yu chai or um de ya e ying wo um zhou yu de zhou um gu zhi yong chai ke shi da shi ying bo da qi na yao e wo zhou yu um. Chin chai hing na, chi hoi ki lan chai sa na, okay, lan chai me me sa, yi yai te zhou yu ying chai hat te te zhou yu yu ta shi ning na yo. Te zhou, it could be something like chai xin dao, for example, but it doesn't have to be. It could be um, abuse, for example, so yo, um, you know, te zhou yu hot to chi tso, ding te na yo, um, la te zhou, um, 
you have bought the ya suli i don't know could be like you bought nietzi shin tao shi to even right the ya oto you jin chai hing na hou you lu ning na yao ge chi ta lin dao su ya won you jin chai na de na shen go de chi cho you chi na okay so you tali bo shu bo zo you ni wo da chi lo shen go ni ni tali yang de you lu shai mu okay um you tu chi sa zo lo lo ni tali ke hou you lu ba lu ta mo le su um chi tali de lo hou you lu ge ge su na yao you to ti you bi no ten de you bi bo ten de you bo ke da chi e cho um a uh what do you don't think that is my what do you it gets mm-hmm. da lo you know you get more of physical reaction yeah um, so all of that is trauma okay from the net be more trauma and then of course in china then yeah so you you more it call a yeah it happened in the to you learn yeah first of all your what do you in chilo le to okay especially you got trauma then then you involve other people so you think or pick to each other or think of pick to you na you yeah more call you you in china na okay um tia they show you um they show ma tia tia trauma na ma ni o to to you bao you you so gain jing xia to lu le tu chi ta lin da lo ni bao ho ge you to tao you to king ta na so for example you you um da chi 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 to you na a uh bin ning hai to you the oh ko chi chi xia na i to te li uh ko te li zhou kong de um ha ben to ko na ya So uh-huh. then the you the king ah, you keep feeling you just more it 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 doing a just more doing the it doing a just just yeah okay so you keep affect you na yo okay you keep both the you keep both you the king lah na okay so to all of this together okay yeah um what happens is to you be both you the king lah you be in general that oh to go yeah to be in a that's what you think yeah that's what you um um. chỉ mua bình sự, tới giờ nhưng do tỷ yếu thế, thế chỉ ta lên đó là những con trai đó luôn được tụt thả, and then chỉ ta lên đó là trauma because nếu như affect you call emotions nha yo, so then you become tới giờ more closed off emotionally, tới giờ you feel like you connect đó luôn được tụt, and so it can feel like autism. Okay, so when you feel like oh, Zhongguo, we don't know how Zhongguo could connect, we don't know how to, um, go 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 to Nia, don't know how to, yeah, because again, you to Nia don't know how to, because you in China, then I yeah, the color in or pay to you do a lot. So it's gonna start to look and feel like autism when in fact it's not, it's trauma. Okay, so that's just an example um, that they can think now, um, depending on what they've been through, it can look like. Autism, or they could feel like they know autism, but in fact, that's not autism. And um, maybe next we could talk about a little bit about more about what autism actually is. Yes, I'd love for. to. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Let's go yeah. ahead and jump into that. Yeah. So um, autism. Now you shy the DSM, so now or the way the be be um. So be lo shan zhuo hai de du bi ning zhu mo autism na de be be shai hou kun de um DSM be ko yi diagnostic manual na na yao hai de um yao na yao shou shou zhi hai de du bi ning yao zhuo lai mo li na li na li na e be te li mo lai ko diagnosis de na yao yao shai hou DSM na e yao shai de um criteria na um it's pretty straightforward you know. That she ma mo hai lo na ya symptom na de na ni yin kind of ni yin nuanced na ni yin yin yo uh yo yu chi ta ta ho autism presentation that dia na ge a lot of people could actually fit criteria yo yu jie ge the criteria so na okay so i'll talk a little bit about the nuanced parts of it um and what we tend to look for or or oftentimes what is often missed In the community, especially with the whole community, a gap how to show that thou autism now. Okay, so that first piece about plenty of deficit or or um, differences in social communication. That's the first criteria, right? So when the just say thou had the um the beginning, then the ma new uh yeah, like how that go high now, yeah, new more it how so sad the how a new thou thou lo lu tu la, the a new um thou lo lu tu ta lo she new um nyong thou it to be ning na a how a new Uh, the topic of mong na bit mo lu nan tao to explain na yao da shi mi ga na ge um we're talking about verbal so ge hai lu na okay mm-hmm. and non verbal so uh the ya you 
瓜，嗯，一个路路度到到有得是去洗路那样。Okay, so for example, um, I visual, right? Eye contact, right? Honda, that's a non-verbal. So for example, um, I, I know that a lot of people hear, oh, they don't have good eye contact, so it's autism. Um, right. It, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. But they have to think in general, you know, they're more autism. That's that's not exactly right. Okay. So what they do, they do thinking, nah, they they have they're really good with eye contact. That's shima. They still have autism. Okay. So it's how they use like called nonverbal, nah, to communicate. So big dog, um, you think in general autism, nah. So for example, you can check on, nah, um, and. Be let's say her situation. Be she she lie lonely. Now, yeah, let's just hypothetically say that. Be she she lie lonely in her situation. Be be chua xin jie te be chua bie te be um you know ye a got be communicating this now. Um, individuals with autism are gonna have a harder time with that. So, for example, you they show in your your situation. Now, yeah, um maybe it becomes awkward, and then you xin jie each other like uh did you you know like that that I you know like、mm -hmm. uh. Did that just really happen? You just、yeah. each other, right? Yeah. Um, you get it because you have more autism, right? You know that look. You、mm -hmm. could interpret that look, and that's saying a whole lot without verbally saying a whole lot, right? That's what you mean. You're with with autism. They don't get it. Go to Jia Le Bo Li Jia. Go to make hand movements. Look, they show the. They're like, what? You know, like what、mm -hmm. are you trying to say? So, um, that is that's what we talk about when we say um verbal to nonverbal. Okay.、Mm -hmm. Um. So that's one thing. The how a social, um, emotional law. How can she tie more? Um. Uh. We say, um, reciprocity. So how reciprocity? Now, my dear, go high, da, ye go high, go high, da, ye go high. She do alone, na na yo. Um. Most people, na, we we do that so naturally. Go bow her, dear, to do go yo da, ye go ye be high, low, do go high, dear, to do go um bow her, dear, go yo da, ye go ye. So we go back and forth like that, very、um, easy. You mean you're more with、uh, with autism, na? You use your linger, na? Okay. You have to use your linger, so yeah, you're like like you're like waiting for a response, but they don't catch it. They're like, oh, were you like after you do like thought and then like、uh, make it very obvious, like oh, you're going to take it, na? You know? Then they're like, oh, which part? They go go your go go take it, you know? And and they miss those cues. Okay, so that's what we're talking about with that reciprocity. If you're telling the law, you should pull. Um, yeah, yeah, they think they don't think that. Oh, they don't know what you're saying, law. The natural response to that is, "I'm going to share that with you." You know,、mm -hmm. but me, yeah, with autism, nah, that that's off the radar. But you say,、right. "Oh, they're going to share law." They'll just be like, as if nothing happened. <laughs> you know, right. um. Right. Missing some of those cues, so that's what we're talking、yeah. about when it comes to、um, social emotional reciprocity. Yeah, um, go you to tao lo hatte oh, to nu hai lin de je de jo ni yo ko ku hai da chi da ka to nu lo, you know, like nu chi mo ko ai to tao hen de na. Yeah, and so、okay. I, my husband might not、yes. be happy that I'm sharing this, but he and I, because you know, I've been in the field for a, a while, and you know, I share.、Yes. Just my my personal struggles in terms of trying to understand, right? As I'm learning,、yes. as the field is changing, and there's a term that I used, and he fought me on it, and it was the lack、yes. of empathy, and that's what you just described,、oh, yes. you know, like、yes. uh -huh. an individual with autism, they you have to teach that. I mean, I've、yes. written many many goals to teach them to identify emotions、yes. and what to do, and what that emotion looks like, and what to do when you you know observe、yes. that emotion. And so, it's not that lo chi k or lo chi lu yu or lo pa yu pa ni chi k ni chi pa mo ke in yu bi lo ke ga or you know ask you what's、yeah. wrong, right? It's just it's just、yes. not. There, right, and so that lack、yes. of empathy is such a big component, and and then it relates to those social skills, those socialization, because you're coming with a bungie, a minimal autism, and that is big、um, for like a better、yeah. word, deficit for them, right, or, or a challenge、yeah. for them,、mm -hmm. and. Yeah. You're you're visibly you know distraught, but they can't pick up、yes. on that and comfort you. If you do Japan, you say they're like okay, it's cool. They're not a good friend,、yes. right? And so you might distance、yes. yourself. But once you know, like oh, you know, like they just they need you to tell them, like I am、yes. so upset about this right now. I I am crying, you know, because I'm so、yes. angry. And then when you talk about that, oh, 
you're crying because you're angry, you're sad. Last yes. time this happened, they said I could give them a hug. So, right. So like breaking yes. down the social, yes. that back and forth, like it doesn't happen yes. naturally. And that's the yes. joy of what I do in my work with my yes. little, you yes. know, like teaching that because mm-hmm. we recognize that even Talam and Mena, let you fall, you know, like the point you bump on the playground, fall, yeah. how to fall, and they're the friends crying. They're laughing because yes. they think it's, yes. they, that's the only emotion that they know how to express. Yes. But even though you mm-hmm. said that, oh, the me on the new new pay oh no you need to put the mama need to know need to fall they don't know any other emotions so yes. they're using the one emotion that they know that, yes. they, know that they get a lot of attention right so i mean we see that yeah. as young you know two or three so i mean right that is a, a lifelong challenge and you know we yes. um continually work on that so dr b in your practice mm-hmm. you know with with consideration to you know phi hip and all that i am just curious to know don't want families it could work uh, that you work with, the ones that have shown mm-hmm. up, yes. um, or, or the ones that you've come across, you know, like what what is uh-huh. the general concern? What are what are the questions mm-hmm. that they have about mm-hmm. their child? Right, because yeah. I would imagine that um, as a parent, you know you may you touch all of them mm-hmm. in a different way and then when they're older you're worried mm-hmm. about them in a different way but what is a common thread um, for all these yeah. parents these long parents right when we talk about yeah. autism mm-hmm. yeah you know um i think um y'all a just probably like what you would probably guess y'all a thought now y'all yeah y'all a mean you a more um autism that's more severe y'all a um Ying more obvious. Now, they show you jet to me, you manage the obvious. So, yeah, yeah, they pay your mom, honey, you want the young, you don't know, so you know, like you and Jenny physically kissing up, you and she bought her there, um, anything wrong. Now, yeah, that she might ying your dominion, a they show, no, you more, um, um, just more severe on the um spectrum in that, um, dominion, no, you know, they show she took. ซอไฮโลจิตอซอไฮโลฮูนะหรือตื้ออ่ามอนฮูยูโลลอจงโกโลจิตอปอไฮโลเลชันนาไดเวอร์สอีเวนท์ตอลอตื้อมอปลอช
Okay, they might know that, but they don't. They might not understand what it is. And not really understand that maybe they have autism. Okay, so I think that there, there's a huge, um, huge group of the population that we have not even tapped into. about the autism Yes, definitely. And it goes back to the terminology, y'all. The three yeah. types of autism, everybody equates or, or you know, overgeneralized mm-hmm. to do. So nobody wants to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to be grouped in that conversation. But as we are debunking yes. and, you know, really defining these terms, we I hope that that group yes. that you're talking about, the one that's being missed, that they can kind of go, you yes. know, all my life, I felt this certain way. I didn't know what it was. And then they can hopefully yeah. get support for that. Um, you had mentioned yeah. that um, high-functioning ASD is being missed, especially in girls. Can you elaborate more yes. on that? Yeah, so I, I'm going to go, uh, yes, I, I will elaborate on that. Um, and so, um, criteria or uh, symptoms to autism. Yes. That's the first portion. The second portion, I think, is going to speak more to that piece. Okay. okay. So, um, the bigger piece to, uh, not bigger, but the other um, big piece to autism na, is that uh, restrictive, repetitive, rigid behaviors. Now, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think. Um, I think it highlights, oh, yeah, they do, um, especially autism girls, um, high functioning, they get missed so easily. So with this part, okay, so um, again, a lot of um, misdiagnosis because of this. And yeah, very obviously, it's a really big thing to learn. It's easily identified uh, as autism, uh, probably easily, okay, and probably early on. That she got a visual certain, um, visual certain environment, until you require, until you want to call a thing, may not you see to listen, then these are going to be kind of fly under the radar, okay, until they're in those situations where they realize that, oh my god, I'm so rigid, or yeah, what you tell me the other people, you know, mm-hmm. um, then that's when they're start gonna, they're, they're start gonna notice that, oh, okay, there's a real problem here. Okay. So, okay. So rigid and repetitive behaviors. Okay. So what we're talking about are, you know, people who, um, there's, there's a lot of different things under here. So I'll talk about some of the things. Okay. So mm-hmm. um, they are um, individuals who uh, might use certain phrases only. Right. So um, like, and, and they're like, um, prescriptive phrases where a phrase that you mm-hmm. so like for mm-hmm. example like um it is what it is you know they don't say it like that right that that tone that i said it was like really yeah. um um more a different pitch and tone usually it's really flat yes. they might say like it is what it is you know and then just like you know and they might repeat that over and over with every response okay mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. they um you know, what are other good ones? Um, and, and they might be like, really, um, and I'm sure you have great examples of this working with kids with autism. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a kid that will say like, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And he'll yeah. keep saying this over and over and <laughs> over, right? Um, yeah. So they'll they'll use certain phrases like that. So that's just an example. Mm-hmm. Um, the people yeah. with autism, they might uh, line up certain things. You have to li- line up a cer- certain way. Um, they have to do things a certain way. And the difference between Konate OCD now, okay, so mm-hmm. that again, um, that's another area where I think people get misdiagnosed. Um, you, you, yeah, well, things the same way over and over. The difference mm-hmm. between the two is that OCD is really driven by anxiety. You, 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 Whereas for autism, it's not really functional. Um, it, there's no anxiety necessarily attached. They just like to line things up. That's mm-hmm. just what they do. And there's no like real function behind it. Whereas um, anxiety or for OCD, the, the function is to reduce anxiety. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a differentiator between all oh, Okay. But for kids with autism, there is quite a bit of like lining up, counting and like, you know, things like that. Like um, that's why I think some people get misdiagnosed. Um, there is also kind of this, um, you, uh, as I mentioned before, the, um, 
that sameness, okay? You that like what everything the same, that more less, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, you get, uh, like, you try to find more, maybe more work now, yeah. You like more deep talk cases. You more try to talk about the code, yeah, you more think make. I mean, not that you more yeah. think make, but it's really <laughs> distressing, okay? Yeah. So, you have to yeah. do things exactly the same. Um, you can't wear too much. And and t- usually, if there is something, you know, that um, changes, like like the, the person driving to work, okay? You're more like, it's very, mm-hmm. very upsetting. It's not like, you know, a normal person where, okay, good, gay, gay, you just go a different route. Like it's very, right. prob- it, bec- it can become very problematic. It throws off your whole day, that type of thing. So, you mm-hmm. know, um, don't you mean yeah, you have to do things a certain way, and then you know, you um like I don't know, you always have to have rice. I don't know. And then if mom says, Oh, today we're gonna have something else and throw something else mm-hmm. in, then that's a huge problem. They throw a big fit, look cool, you know, right? And stuff like that. And parents are like, it's not that big of a deal, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, oh my god, um, you know, 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 so, and especially, you know, it's a high low, right? Um, and, but they're very rigid. Um, that could be an issue for families and they might not know that it's actually autism. Okay. So that's another thing. Um, let's see. Oh, um, intensity of focus, you know, um, again, this is where, um, it can also get misdiagnosed with um, bipolar. Um, mm-hmm. Imagine that. But they show now you get so you do something and you're so intense because um, you're just absorbed in it. And people might think, oh, you know, they look focused. And it's so excessive. Um, is that bipolar? You know, like they would mm-hmm. stay up days to do that thing and it may not be it's it may be actually autism it's so mm-hmm. intense and that that um interest and um there's kind of rigidities around it um yeah so that's where i think some of the differentiation has to come in um kind of in the same area too um the sensory but that what they are you know um you both on the intina through your senses you know Mm-hmm. Um, so you ball, you ball, like, you know, you ball, you ball not around you, you know, mm-hmm. you, um, not though, you taste all night, um, um, you know, they are like, um, on your skin. So like, um, you feel your seat, like how hard or soft that is. You feel your clothes on your skin. So does senses, no, no, that there's, so there's five senses. Um, I mean, there's other things that might be more problematic for um autism but oh, we'll just focus on class five so, um the shima yamin yo more autism now they're more, more sensitive to just sensory no na yo so mm-hmm. they yeah it's normal so you see now for lana it's very very um they're very sensitive to it so it's like magnified okay so they yeah like like uh maybe us um clothes for example that's a big one jeans is a big one right mm-hmm. people could wear jeans and that you know people feel comfortable in that i mean y'all with autism they're very they can be very particular about texture right so jeans not might feel way too tight it'll notch my jeans okay um the tags on their their shirts um you know most of us we don't feel it we put on our clothes we don't feel those tags but you mean y'all with mm-hmm. autism they will feel that tag like it's there and it's like digging into their skin and it's like making their skin crawl. Yeah. Like they can't wear that. Um, so they're very particular about some of these things. So that's because they have, um, you know, hyper or hypo sensitivity. They, and I say hypo sensitivity because they, yeah, um, they might not register it the same. So actually kids with autism have, uh, some of them, or it's kind of, I guess, characteristically, they tend to have a higher pain tolerance. Okay, so mm-hmm. the pain um, more, um, the average person, because of the um, kind of disconnect, if you will, from the new body, do, um, you know, just kind of the, the miswiring, you know, they don't register pain in the same way. Okay, so 
um, they show the mallana, they might even be bleeding and they don't feel the pain that as uh, the average person might feel it. Okay. So while they have all these yeah. hypersensitivities, they might also experience hyposensitivity too. So it's good to kind of pay attention to some of those things. Okay. So that's just kind of very a brief rundown. It could get more and more complicated. I mean, there's so many nuances mm -hmm. for yeah. the, uh, rigid and restrictive behavior. Um, but to answer a question, Batana, about high functioning, especially girls and autism. So mm -hmm. as you recall, the first part of autism um, is that it has to do with social communication. Okay. Okay. It doesn't, it's not necessarily in general, we were socialized to do that better. And we're more verbal anyway. So we do that mm -hmm. better. Okay. So because of that, um, we can't, we've learned different ways of communicating. Communication, it's more developed. Okay, so we could we um, I would say that girls go a long time a lot longer without that that being detected. Um, but what you will notice, especially um, when, when we assess your high functioning autism girls, now what we'll um, mm -hmm. learn in talking to them is that they'll say things like, uh, "Yeah, I I could do that." Like right when you when they communicate with others, they could do that very naturally. However, what they will say is that they have all these um, rules in their minds um, that they have to follow. Then I have to remember I behave in this way or I have to say it in this way. But this is rules that they've established through trial and error. They've been, um, they've lost many mm -hmm. friends. They've um, have many social relationship difficulties, and they finally realize, oh, okay, so you are highly non ethical, you are only now a little in Yaku or like Tilly, um, Moke Pongyuku, you go highly in the Yuki Haikiasina, then that's too rough. They'll learn that, oh, go high not in Cad Holo, you know, we are trying to call Gulusho Minchi, a little Tsai like Yalu Yale go high the tear, right? Because they're very, um, they don't. Mm -hmm. Luchi, um, not that Luchi sat on Tetaka, but they're more blunt. So, yeah. um, so they really mm -hmm. have to go by all these different rules. And what we'll notice for Gamino on Tsai, especially Gamino on Tsai, high functioning, is that um, it's exhausting for them. Social yeah. environments, um, yeah. so it's a little bit different than introverts. Okay, introverts is exhausting in the social environment. That shima called exhaustion uh, for autism is that they're playing with so many rules and trying to keep everything straight and trying to read really hard, trying really hard to read the social environment because they don't know how to react. They don't know how to understand their social environment. And that is what is so hard about it. Okay. So that's what we're, um, those are the challenges that makes it um, harder. So then y'all a more apparent, not do y'all minyon tsai na, um, is those rigid behaviors. So okay, maybe they learned the rules and they were able to do that. The Shima, um, they're they're still very rigid in the way that they think about things. Um or it takes them so long before they could do it. And then what they mean to learn, for example, if it's like a work project, right? Like a school project, you try to work at the grade or the test to accomplish the test and the work. You learn more, you learn like in their mind, if you learn more about planet, you learn more about the 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 planet, you learn more But if they cannot visualize that, you learn more about the planet, and then you're gonna start having work problems, and they can't be flexible about that. Um, so yeah, so that's um, that's part of the reason why it's uh, it gets missed until uh, later on, and especially for very high functioning um, girls, um, it gets missed easily because they pass it off so well. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for breaking that down and explaining in such a great long way. You know, um, as Ga uh, explained all those different characteristics, Dr. B, I wonder if the big Ujjal listeners, Ujjal listeners are like, oh my gosh, I feel like that sometimes, right? I have a little bit of OCD sometimes, or yes. I'm a little rigid sometimes, or I can't yes. pick up social cues sometimes, or I establish those same rules for myself. Um, but, you know, I just want to remind everyone, please don't self-diagnose, first of all. Yes. <laughs> and yes. then second of all, but, yes. yeah, let's talk about, you know, sure, we all can have some kind of compo- of those yes. components, but yes. what makes it tricky for autism to be diagnosed yes. is how much it impairs your quality of life, yes. right? That's when you are seeking the diagnosis. Exactly. And same for you, Jamino, right? Like, sure, you know, some kids yeah. love to line cars up. Like, my two year old, like, he loves to line his cars mm-hmm. up, you know, but, uh, but mm-hmm. he also has great eye contact. You know, if we call his name, he's yeah. looking, you know. Uh, and yeah. so don't be alarmed, like, oh my gosh, all these things that they yeah. said, my child does it. Yeah. But then here's, yeah, you know, here's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. here's another thing. Um, as we are making our Hmong community more aware, we also yeah. find that they are more yeah. comfortable with just talking about autism. And I have seen more Hmong parents, Dr. B, saying, you know what? I realized through a process of getting my child diagnosed that I might be on the spectrum. So tell me about that. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. more parents are kind of coming out of the woodworks going, I realized that, you know, watching my child through their diagnostic process, that I myself might be on the the spectrum. And it's not so much like, oh, you have to get diagnosed or seek a diagnosis for X, Y, Z. It's just mainly for your understanding, y'all. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So it's very important that we get them in early, especially if their symptoms are uh, significantly impairing. Okay. Don't call no more. Yeah. Like the rewiring, especially the sooner you could get your child in, the better chance we have at rewiring. It's still growing. That she totally. Um, so the the brain stops developing or fold not stops developing it, it's fully uh developed or matured by your mid twenties mm-hmm. okay yeah so the earlier we could get to it the more chance we got we get at rewiring okay the, how the brain works okay so that's why it's important especially for the zero to five okay um so you should you law until if you the ball early signs that it's really important to get in there and start working on the rewiring. Okay. Um, tell them Donna, um, it's still successful, but it's just that that period is so critical for brain growth. Okay. Yes. That's why we say zero to five. That she told them Donna, yeah, the brain continues to grow until you're like, um, fully mature at like 20, you know, 24, 25. So mm-hmm. even then there's still a lot of things happening in your brain. So that is, still it's going to be important to get a diagnosis and to get certain treatments um, and accommodations so that you could do your best work. And not only that, but if you think about that time frame, um, mm-hmm. they, um, we want to make sure that they are getting educated. And if they are so, um, um, they're so distressed by local environment, law, um, law uh, you know, not understanding social uh, cues, social relationships, and then uh, then that's a mm-hmm. problem for them later on. That's why it's so important for beta kiddos to get diagnosed so that they could get accommodation so they could do the best learning in those formative years. So um, they, you know, at that point, your brain has more like a fully matured. Um, your brain continues to grow. There's a lot of, you know, um, brain stuff that's still happening. That's Shima, um, the critical point has now passed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really about um helping you to adapt to your environment. It goes from the whole your environment. So it's still good to get evaluated and get diagnosed if you are having problems adapting to your environment. I need um accommodations or maybe just to learn what those accommodations are. So that you could adapt and be productive and work and earn a living and be happy and find relationships mm-hmm. and things like that. It's still very help, helpful, okay, for that from that perspective. That she had critical, okay, that's why we emphasize kiddos, okay, getting diagnosed. Um, and I want to point, yeah, that's so absolutely true. And I'm glad that you pointed out because 
I think we all fall on the spectrum. <laughs> See, that's why there's yeah. a spectrum. Um, right. It's a matter of how debilitating it is, how much new um, gel symptom. No, not all together. How much mm-hmm. does it impact your functionality? Okay. Y'all, where you cannot hold a job, where you cannot, like, so it, it's impacting what we say a major um, area of functioning. Okay. So yes. um, that's employment, that's family life. That's social life, um, you know, anything that like is a major role in your life. It got what you thought, um, like a role in the That's when it's going to be important for you to get evaluated so that you could, um, you know, get some help for yourself. But it is okay. It's absolutely okay to be a little bit rigid. It's a little, you know, it's okay to be, um, you know, a little bit inflexible. It's okay to go by some rules. Um, that's, you know, I think it, it sets us all, um, you know, like, uh, for example, you might have some rules that you live by because it teaches you to be a good person, right? Yeah. Those are all absolutely fine, okay? Um, wh- what we're talking about is when those things become so problematic that it's new, new, cause a lot more problems, don't you? And I yell, then it's, um, then what it's worth, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. I could, you, I feel like I talk with you all day long about all these things and everything you were talking about earlier (laughs) in my mind. I was like, yes, yes, yes. When you're talking about little phrases that kiddos use, I have one. Whenever he's excited, you would hear too many Uh and beyond. And he was like 17, but that phrase was meaningful, right? So, like, you know, that's just a phrase. And it's it's always in that tone, you know, too many and beyond every time. And then, you know, you talk about the flat effect, you know, like they might be excited for some, but and you go, oh, I'm yeah. so happy for you. And you're like, are you? You don't sound yes. like it, right? But like again, yeah, you yeah. You know, that is just a disposition that they have, you know, then you would be yeah. like, wow, they're not a good friend, but that flat effect is a yeah. you know characteristic. Yeah. So yeah, I could we could probably talk yes. about this all day long, but I am going mm-hmm. to wrap this up with one more question. Yeah. Yes. that um uh-huh. you know, the families and listeners might want to know is yeah so mm-hmm. you talked about uh i feel like yeah uh, if i may say so this was probably the most clearly described uh uh version or definition picture of autism in mom so Thank you so much. What shows so yeah. much that you yeah. broke it down in those terms, but staying true to the science, right? And not yeah. not simplifying to the point where we don't even know what we're, yeah. we're describing autism anymore. So yeah. it was beautiful. And I'm so excited right. to share this with the world. But now what are yeah. some functional and practical skills um, that you would recommend for families yeah. to work on in the home to help their kiddos? Yes. Yes. So um, what I would really recommend um, it, whether got the or more a diagnosis or not, if if, you know, if they truly have trouble, you know, functioning, you should get a diagnosis to help guide you further. Um, but even if you know, if you have kiddos who are just more rigid, if who have a lot of these uh, problems, but more or less they're you know um, functional, you could still use this. Okay, um, I mm-hmm. I would say that um, structure. Okay, structure. So you um you cycle structure now yeah I think we all kind of know what that means but um to break it down right so yeah you are there um okay ye mona be or should I um well start before that so you lot chain the kids lot chain um and then mm-hmm. maybe domo be or should no more okay so right around domo mm-hmm. you should eat ye mon okay you know you get ready for bed they show you mo that day maybe you read to them and then they will boot okay so that's kind of the routine right. But, you know, so having those routines actually help them because they're rigid, right? They need you to um, mm-hmm. um, just kind of lay things out. And then they, if they could expect it, like, you know, um, you know, what is expected, okay, they do a lot better, right? So anytime that you mm-hmm. can build in routines like that, um, it's it's going to be good for you to do that. Um, know, though, that, you know, obviously, if there's changes in routines, there's going to be behaviors that's going to come up, right? And so we'll have to Mm -hmm. um, kind of deal with those behaviors, too. But the more routines that you have, the better it's going to be for um, you, the minion, okay? So in addition to that, um, we we have um, this thing where uh, Okay, we, especially I think we're realizing that I've heard this quite a lot. Like, oh, you know, um, 
亚萨罗马贝车，嗯，贝莫个几个做凶手啊，比如保姆，我问到了，你侬有因保八月廿七就知，有因，呃，你侬保屋里屋里侬，你侬 right like。You, we're just more mature, it seems like. That's what we're talking about.、Mm-hmm. And they'll say things like, "Oh, Yamiya, they're not, you know, they're so immature. Let's just bow. Let's just Yamiya, yell, so let's then go show. Let's just Yamiya, yell. That is very true.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, not very true, but that that's true to a certain extent. And <laughs> I also think that to be Yamuna, um, uh, to be here, to be teach, um, that you know, yeah, any messaging, be she, uh. This is exactly what I mean. Okay,、mm-hmm. um, they'll just say things like, "Oh, she saw one of those Marlin, the Chijona," you know. So,、mm-hmm. for example, um, um, you know, uh, being a girl or a woman going out in public, um, you can't, uh, we'll say you can't hug your dad. Okay, that、mm-hmm. example. Um, yeah. You know, and they might be like confused about that. Well, I hug dad all the time at home. They're very black and white. Okay, so the、yeah. um the chipo had the you know um in certain settings it might require certain behaviors that's more appropriate.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so if they're taught, oh, come with the doma, you know, you can't、uh, be all around your dad. You can't be be hugging your dad. Good, good dad, you know, you know, um, I don't know, good dad, you don't need to gain whatever, right? <laughs> Hochena, fine.、Yeah. You can hug him,、yeah. whatever. The shima got the little lala. Now don't do that. You know that's weird. That's awkward. Don't do that. You know,、um, mm-hmm. and they don't explain. Don't learn. I yell. Have the like lochi explain. Have the okay. How belo culture. I yell. Um, but be chi walin da la be chi sa ko. You know, dimming sali ga, and then explain what that means. You know that there、mm-hmm. is. You know that sexual component that people could be misperceiving, or you know anything、yeah. like that, right? That would actually be a change to learn that. Okay, this is the reason why why they only know that y'all, um, you know, and they might just be confused. Like, how come I have to be a certain way out in the community, and I have to be a certain way in here, like in our house? Like, that's very confusing. Don't get me wrong, okay? So yeah,、um, yeah, if there's certain expectation or roles like that, um. You have to, yeah. You might mean you actually chose the tower, then, ah. You have to explain everything and really explain it in a way, go, um, you know, go new grounded. Don't learn, ah, yeah. Go learn more her history, go understand it. There, you have really got it. There, ah, locally, like all in, then, ah, um, and in, and maybe even further, what environment specifically? What do they need to look for for them to say, oh, this、mm-hmm. is when I act like this. And this is when、yeah. I, it's okay for me to act the way that I do. Yeah, you just explain it. Let you just um. So it's a lot of work. As you think about that, it gets、yes. very complex. So big whole culture, nah. Um. So、mm-hmm. it it's not a one and done. Like it's not simple. It's not like oh um, oh doctor B handling the day. Okay, in this situation, go now. It's not as easy as that. You have to think about oh how does this play out and maybe in this environment, in that environment. If I'm not doing that, no, no, you only tell me. You know, so you really have to think that through and really explain that to go to me, you know, because they're not going to be able to generalize that. Let your body talk up here, listen, okay? So, um, that's something that I do think that um, your body, body, your body, you know, that your body, 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 Yeah, to be honest, they should do that for neurotypical mom kids too. You know, myself included, because I, I, I think culturally, you know, as you grow up, you know, he's either go yum yum yum, she's not a no, you're balling the sick, right? Well, pick up on the key, you know, don't go all loose, and you're like, why, right? If you're inquisitive, you're like, but why? So,、yes. you know, I think that could probably、yes. apply to our neurotypical、uh, peers as well. But yes, for sure, you know, being so、yeah. black and white and breaking it down to the very like smallest level, y'all. Um, and you know, you、yes. opened this talking about,、uh, of course, today go invite girl on my podcast. Go you to you diagnose、mm-hmm. individuals with autism, right? So when、yeah. we look at the、um, yes. the hierarchy and the timeline, so they get referred to you. You do your assessments. You diagnose、mm-hmm. them. Once they have that diagnosis,、mm-hmm. they come to me, right? I do the treatment planning、yes. and teaching those skills and everything. But let's talk about that diagnosis.、Mm-hmm. That first step. 
to get diagnosis is mm-hmm. so hard. And I imagine for a bit yeah. of mom parents, yes. you know, let you understand just the weight of what a diagnosis can do for your child, right? Because like maybe they think, oh, yes. do you need diagnosis? The heart maybe, you know, back and down, is it okay? Nicole, did you have anything? But I think my message is that diagnosis is your key into a lot of doors that otherwise would not be open to you and your child, yes. right? And so mm-hmm. sometimes that the lack of understanding yeah. and awareness of how that diagnosis can help your child, can benefit your child, as opposed to something to be ashamed of, something to be scared of. Oh no, you know, more yes. diagnosis okay. But it's not true. Like that diagnosis yeah. will help your kiddo yes. in the future. So um, you know, just I, I cannot let this um, you know episode yes. end without saying you know, yes. especially with you here as my yes. guest, that that diagnosis is so important and easier when they're young. And when I say easier, I don't mean mm-hmm. that. I still mean you have to. There's still a long wait list, like years long. So get the earlier yeah. you get in. But I find a lot of people reaching yeah. out to me going, Tia, my child is 10 and I cannot find any psychiatrist, psychologist who will diagnose them yeah. because, you know, they they are yeah. maybe focusing on that, you know, under five group. So the wait list is yes. like two to three years. Yes. And so it gets trickier. So the message is please get in early for those diagnoses. Do not be afraid of the diagnosis. Yes. It will help your child not hinder or impede any progress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, to speak about diagnosis, now y'all, diagnosis, now y'all, it's called um, uh, medical terminology. Then now y'all, it's called a yoga um, base support. Though, it's called base, base, or hello, insurance. Now y'all, primarily insurance. And so for insurance, mm-hmm. it's you build though, insurance cover you, you um, call service, and then now y'all, they need a diagnosis. Now y'all, so more high level, now they call diagnosis. Now y'all, you know, insurance purposes, you know, okay. So no more diagnosis. That you more law you as a parent, you bow you the meal chop lah. So no more no call diagnosis law. You bow her the you the meal the more they mean bow ya. Okay. So yes. know that. Okay. It doesn't change your child. So no more that you more law. Go you bow her the you more the mean. Okay. No you go um go the meal mah. Go you bow her the ya. The ya ya you do you. Okay. But know that there is help. The the earlier you could get the help the better chance your child has to um, rewire, to call, to learn the skills. Now, y'all, a go new path, new to kina, a la nu, a go, you know, go pachi tau nu la na, la nu te path, new to king, le ko nu path tau. Okay. You go chi pa nu na, a la nu, a chi mo ko la ne, nu haya zo nye na. Okay. So, really, the mm-hmm. diagnosis is for services. Okay, it doesn't, um, I know the diagnosis can be scary. Tashima, like I said, mm-hmm. so um, just kind of keep yeah. that in mind. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. B, for your expertise, your wealth of yes. knowledge, and really breaking it down in Hmong. I learned so many new phrases yeah. and words today. I'm so excited to go back and listen to what you said and be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> Because I think you know, growing <laughs> yes. up in, 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 you know, growing up in this world, uh, for some of us who are not privileged uh-huh. to be in a Hmong only speaking environment, and then grow in a Hmong yeah. community where you know y'all, you your colleagues, she Luna, a huge following, you're just trying to piece it together. Yes. But as we continue yeah. this autism awareness uh, within a Hmong community, I love having access to uh, professionals like you who are just kind of leading the charge out there too, yeah. and kind of uh, ensuring that our Hmong mm-hmm. families uh, feel seen and heard because how how yeah uh, gosh exhilarating is it to walk into your office at a Hmong clinician and be like oh mm-hmm. my gosh do mama i can show up and be myself i don't have to use a tra- interpreter yeah. translator i don't have to yes. find words that i don't know the definition to so that's so important and so thank you so much yes. for all your work and i wanted to mention yeah. the, you know the mental health awareness in the Hmong community has just started booming in the last few years and you and the team mm-hmm. that you were part of this last week in, in the claire you guys are amazing and i'm just so privileged to be able to have oh, you in my podcast you. talk about mental health awareness yes. and you know what you guys are doing to change that landscape i mean it's going to change our whole community for the better and i'm just so excited to be a yeah. small part of that so thank you so much for everything yeah 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. The the privilege has uh, been all mine being here and sharing what I know. Because, you know, um, um, I, I really want our Hmong people to be educated so that they could help themselves so that we could all help each other Mm -hmm. be better, you know, be healthier and get the resources and services that we need so that we could all succeed. There is help. Um, So I I just want to encourage people. You know, there is definitely help. I saw that you're a couple of, um, where and they really struggle with mental health challenges themselves because um, yes. um, mm-hmm. don't let it get to that point mm-hmm. there's help out there yeah. from among families now and I just want to encourage people mm-hmm. the, uh, um you know just be open open to the idea that Okay, so I just want to encourage everyone um, if you have a child who really struggles to please get the help. Yes, thank you. I just got chills listening to you. That's such an important message. And I think, you know, ties in, you know, that full circle back to the mental health awareness. Like, I love that you and I can even yeah. talk about this, yeah. that we can even have this conversation yes. because even a decade ago, nobody was talking about this um, I'm in mainstream yes. media and much less the Hmong community. So thank you for being a partner in this conversation. Yes. And I look forward to much more collaboration yeah. with you and all the clinicians yes. out there. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you.